message, no matter where I go, is always the same. And that question I ask is, what am I standing in the presence of? And the answer is greatness. I started Talk is Cheap after sitting in an assembly at Borman High School. I had an opportunity to hear a speaker and thought he was very good at what he did, but I realized that one of the problems was he was leaving. I wouldn't be there to build rapport with the kids at all. I wouldn't have an opportunity to go back to the guidance counselor's office and try to meet with some of the kids individually. And I thought that uh, the message was very good, but Talk was cheap. He needed to make himself available to the kids, and that's one of the benefits I've got of living here in Borman is being available in the schools. Today and Diversity Day and Mix It Up Day is you experience leaving your comfort zone. And from some of you, what I saw in the lunchrooms, you were very traumatized. I mean, you just sat there staring like way off in the distance trying to find your happy place. I brought a banner today that your school <coughs> did eight years ago. I brought the banner because, as most of you know, the story of Chris Sutton, we lost him to brain cancer when he was a junior here at Gorman. And what I wanted you to understand was that when this school works together, the difference that you can make is off the charts. When you work independent of each other, everything becomes more difficult and aggravating because you're alone. So my intentions today with the few minutes I have is to challenge the student body to stop making it about you. Um, the reason I started the organization Talk is Cheap and with the primary focus on our audience being teenagers was because when I was a teenager, uh, even though I came from a great family with both a mom and a dad, I still struggled with self-esteem issues. I always compared myself to everyone else and uh, I didn't like me. Here's a uh, very personal story in my speech at uh, Borman High School and all the other schools I speak in. Uh, it's the story of a young man who went to Borman High School and sadly passed away his junior year of high school was interesting about Chris was he never made excuses for why he was sick. He didn't quit trying to make a difference with other people and one of the things he was uh, most unique at was making people laugh. I used to be a volunteer youth pastor. I had a kid that we had taken to a YMCA sleepover. He was one of 200. Those sleepovers started at 10.30 on Friday night and they are pretty strict about messing around because somebody could get hurt. And there was one little boy who would not stop running. And you know, at first it was kind of funny, like, dude, you're going to wear yourself out. But at 3 in the morning, he was getting old. So then I turned on my unhappy face, and I went, Chris, stop running. And as he's still running, looking back, and he goes, I can't help him. I'm having too much fun. And I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to bring this kid. Three weeks from the day I met him that night. And he found a tumor in his chest, the size of a small football. It was cancerous. Cleveland Clinic said, we're going to take it out, but here's the problem. It's wrapped around his aorta and his spine. He could either bleed to death and be paralyzed for life. But if we don't take it out, we'll die. They took the cancer out. They, I've got all but 10%. They chemo and irradiated the rest. Poor Chris, who was just a 13-year-old little boy. Lost all of his hair. And I'll never forget the first time he came to youth group with his friend, and I'm looking at Nick Rowe. And I'm like, I know Chris has got cancer, that's why he's bald, but Nick Rowe goes to Lowellville School. So I mean, they don't even hang that tight together. And I said to Nick, I said, well, dude, why, why are you bald? And his answer was, his, my friend's going to be bald. Then I'm going to be bold. And in a group as big as this student body, I have to ask, I'm going to kill to have a friend like that in life. 
Because it's a trick question. Be that friend. Stop wanting them. Just go be one. I can go into your lunchroom tomorrow and I'll find kids who sit alone. And you say they're weird. I want you to hear this from your speaker today as we finish your day of diversity day. I'm as weird as they come. Normal's a setting on a dryer. And I'm not an American. I'm a human being with issues, experiences, hurts, and victories. Just like you. But here's what's troubling to me. If we don't stop the tide of hate, if we don't get rid of the spirit of judgmentalness, racism, better than, if we don't start spreading some of the joy and the love, it's only going to get worse. Am I telling the truth, adults, or am I lying? So as we finish up today, I want to ask you a question. Where do you play into this picture, this story? Because I can tell you what happened to him. Chris did something most dangerous could never do. He planned his own funeral. Because three and a half years later, he got brain cancer. And I'll never forget when I saw Christopher right before he passed away, he had an eye patch on his eye. He said, but, but you got to tell me. My friends, you have to tell the students to not quit. And I said, I, I got your back, man. I'll do that. I told Chris I loved them. I gave him a kiss on the cheek. We flew to Florida the day before Thanksgiving. I called to see how Chris was. His mom answered the phone, and Chris said, or his mom said, Chris will do a coma today. His body was beginning to shut down. But I know he can still hear you. I want you to talk to him one more time. He said, hey, Chris, it's good. Dude, I'm sorry. I said, I don't understand why this had to happen. But I want to make a promise to you. I said, for the rest of you. For the rest of my life. I won't forget you. I'll show you a picture. I'll play your song. And I'll ask people everywhere I go, what's your excuse? I have a 1.68 grade point average from working in high school. Not because the school failed, I did. I didn't even go to college. And yet I go speak to them all the time. Don't tell me you're not smart enough. And don't tell me you're too young. Because that little boy was 17 when he died on Thanksgiving Day 2000. The day before, I whispered in his ear through the phone and said, Chris, I'm so proud of you. The baton has been handed off to you. It's your turn, teenager, to go do your very best. You know where that starts? Maybe in this room. Maybe you need to go to someone and say, I'm sorry. Maybe someone in this room have to go tell somebody, I forgive you.